Kia ora koutou and welcome to the second of the Education Outdoors New Zealand Revisioning School Camps mini webinar series. Um, we're now at webinar number two. Um, so today we're going to be looking at um, four key concepts that you might want to consider in your revisioning school camps process. Um, my name is Sophie Watson and I am the education um, lead for this professional development program and it's great to have you along today for this um, webinar. Just a couple of housekeeping things. If you could please keep your microphones on mute, um, there will be question and answer time at the end of the presentation. And um, this webinar will last about 40 minutes, including the question and answer time. And um, so there will definitely be time for that. Um, if you can just pop your questions into the chat or you can ask them at the end, then um, that would be great. Just a bit of background about the EONS and revisioning school camps. So Education Outdoors New Zealand is the uh, subject association or professional body for education outside the classroom or any learning that takes place outside the classroom. And so that includes outdoor education as well. And we provide one-to-one uh, -one support um, for schools and teachers wanting to look at different aspects of their EOTC. Um, that might include safety management, curriculum development, um, just general advice. Um, and we run a range of professional development workshops, including this one. Um, so the Revisioning School Camps Professional Development has been running since 2019 with support with the network of expertise funding. And we're now into our third round of delivering these, um, these workshops. And we've actually got another round coming out uh, soon in November. So I'll speak to that at the end of this presentation. Uh, this Professional Development Program is all about supporting schools and teachers to develop place responsive, student centred and localised uh, school camp programs. And um, we really, uh, as part of the PLD, there's a one day workshop, there's six to nine months of post workshop support to help you implement those changes and a half day wananga as well as a chance to get together and to learn some uh, different skills and activities that you can deliver with your staff and your pākonga. So thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we will jump right into it. Uh, oh, just one thing is if you aren't part of the EOTC database or you're not sure, um, please find out uh, from your senior leadership team or your EOTC coordinator if you are or aren't. If you are, you definitely should be part of it. It's um, just every now and then email updates about important EOTC matters like um, the COVID alert changes and how to manage that and with the EOTC and things like that. So if you're unsure, then you can also reach out to us and we will find out whether your school is part of it or not. So today's webinar, we're going to be looking at the four key concepts. Um, these four key concepts came from the Revisioning School Camps resource, which the PLD is based on. You can access that free resource on our website and that um, is like a, a Bible of all kinds of things that you might want to consider when you're looking at your school camp programs. Um, just a couple of things, if you've attended this, this webinar before, um, you'll know that I like to say school camp experiences rather than school camps, just to broaden our thinking and, and think in different ways about what our school camps might look like. Um, and so another thing we want to think about is what is actually underpinning our camps. So if you haven't uh, viewed the previous webinar, I would encourage you to do that, in that we looked at um, the importance of having a really strong why and who you might want to consult and what kind of questions you might want to ask to start the revisioning process. So certainly start with the why and why your school is delivering these things and what learning you want your students to experience and what learning they want to experience from school camps. And then these four concepts that we're going to look at today are really helpful in thinking about different aspects of camp and how to make sure that they are inclusive of all students and that they're really responding to um, uh, important aspects of teaching and learning. Now, these four key concepts are by no means the only four concepts uh, or concepts in general that you might want to consider. So we also recommend that schools look at their school values as a way of guiding the work that they're doing around their school camp. So how does your school camp relate to your school values? So these are just four offerings. Um, you can consider them as much as you like, um, and hopefully they'll kind of point you in the right direction or give you some kind of steer moving forward. So um, what I'm going to do for each concept is that I'm going to talk about it more generally and then I will apply it to a school camp context. And remember, if you've got any questions, then just um, hold those until the end and I'll, I'll answer them then. 
Right, so our first concept is equity. Now, I'm sure we're all really familiar with equity. It's um, a concept that we've certainly been talking about in education for quite a while. Um, and we know that equity is one of the most influential factors on student achievement and progress. So equity isn't just about financial equity and, and how students access learning. And there certainly has been some conversations around that, around the school donation scheme, whether your school is part of it or not. Remember that we cannot um, require students to pay for an overnight school camp experience. It can only ever be a donation. Um, and if a student does not pay their donation, um, then they can't be excluded. Everyone must always be included. And that includes for outdoor education subjects as well. However, as I said, equity isn't just about the financial um, aspect. It's also about what kind of learning opportunities are we providing our students? And do our students have the same access to those learning um, environments and those learning situations? So I'm sure many of you are familiar with the, um, the picture or the diagram that I have there. Um, and I really like, um, I've actually seen another one by Anne Milne, who um, there is no sense. So that's about removing those barriers altogether um, and those constraints that we have in our education system. But we certainly need to be thinking about the individual needs of our students and making sure that everyone is supported to be able to go on camps in the same ways. Well, not the same ways, but, but be supported so that they can attend camp. Um, Tatiliti or Waitangi, really must be a core part of this. And certainly there's been a lot more conversation with the Aotearoa New Zealand Histories curriculum coming out next year. Um, and so I think it's um, really important for us to be engaging what Tatiliti means for us on a day-to-day -day basis. And one concept, um, which is mana orite, um, is a really great, what, great way of thinking about how we build up the mana of each other. Um, that might be the mana of our, our co-teachers, it might be the mana of our students and how students build up the mana of each other. But um, I'm gonna be talking a bit more to this in the um, cultural relationships responsive pedagogy um, concept. But equity really is about thinking about all the things that influence our students' lives and making sure that we're um, factoring those in and putting supports in place. So what does this look like, look like on camp? Um, considering what opportunities your students are exposed to. So perhaps um, there might be traditions around your school camps that favor one particular type of experience over another. Perhaps they might be um, quite Eurocentric ways of thinking about school camp, or it might be particular um, approaches. Maybe it's always been about going somewhere new uh, rather than becoming uh, comfortable and familiar with local places. Perhaps it's been about um, really challenging students and um, them not having much control or input. And, and so all these things that we include in our school camp experiences, we need to think about, well, what opportunities are, you know, are our students gaining from that? What learning are they gaining from it? And what, are we prioritizing particular learning over another? Now, that's you know, always gonna happen in education, but we need to make sure that we're aware of that and are aware of the impacts that that might be having. So thinking about what opportunities are being favoured and what learning is being favoured and what is currently missing or could be missing. <coughs> also thinking about safe spaces and practice that include everyone. So, you know, obviously we're talking about differentiated learning within camp. So, you know, when we think of more traditional school camp activities like high ropes or kayaking or things like that, then yes, they can be challenged by choice. Um, and that certainly is one aspect of uh, supporting students in, in one activity. But, but what about other learning? Um, the, the contextual learning that sit, sits alongside your school camp experience, making sure that those learning um, experiences and activities are also di differentiated. We also need to be thinking about gender inclusive facilities um, and practices, including for our rainbow students or our students who are um, intersex or transgender. And um, EONS has a resource that's coming out um, in October, November, that's gonna be talking to those specific things. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but, you know, going back and checking whether your school has a policy, you know, what happens if you have an intersex student? How does your school um, deal with things like that? Um, what about changing rooms on camp? Uh, what about if you are actually in the bush and you're journeying, how are you going to make sure that all students feel safe and that you've considered the specific needs, particularly for students that might have cultural practices, for example, 
um, for some Māori students, it might not be possible to be or suitable for them to be engaged in water activities. So how else are you going to be including them? Uh, rather than just saying, you know, you can sit on the side and do this, you know, maybe there's something else that's more meaningful that they can do. Or for students who might be uh, experiencing Ramadan or um, other cultural events that are really important, how are you considering those? And not just considering them, but building them into um, your school camp experience in really meaningful ways that honour those students. Uh, what about uh, the supportive group culture? I think that's really important. And depending on what time of the year you run your camp um, and the progression of camps that you have throughout your school, that might look different. Um, and we might focus on camp as a way to build that culture, but I also think it's important that our students come to camp with some skills or some prior learning that can support them to flourish on camp rather than just expect that you're going to gel as a group on camp, which generally does happen, but perhaps that could happen more seamlessly or more supported if we did some activities prior to camp to support that further. Right, so the next concept is cultural relationships for responsive pedagogy. Again, I'm sure many of us are, are versed in this, but it certainly can go deeper than what we initially can think. And, and that was something for me in my own learning that um, it was really hard. When I started to delve into this a bit more, I realized that I'd been token in some of my gestures or in some of my um, attempts to support um, students who were of a different ethnicity than or a different culture from myself. And so really what this comes down to is about partnering for learning. So acknowledging the, the power dynamic that we have, you know, as a teacher and, and with your students. And it's not just about, you know, the fact that that's the relationship teacher and student, but um, being aware of how to navigate that or how to um, give some power over to your students when it is appropriate and learning from them and letting them guide their own learning. Um, so it's a shift from being um, responsive to really listening uh, to our students' needs. And sometimes it's actually less about the learning and more about the um, relationship and their identity and the trust that you build with those students. Um, also being aware of, you know, the things that, um, that we have that are privileging some students over others. Um, and thinking about, you know, unconscious bias and all that kind of jazz. Um, so I think listening is really important and, and starting to critique your own practice. And that can be really good to do with um, your, your fellow teachers as well. But engaging with um, the ministry resources is great. And no doubt we'll have a bit more support with that coming up in the next year. So what does that look like on camp um, if we're being culturally responsive? And so, again, like I said, it's about that power sharing about co-design. Um, and making sure that students' own experiences and thoughts are honoured. So that might mean creating space for students to share their knowledge of a place, of a topic, um, rather than assuming that adults are the ones that hold all the knowledge. And it might also be building in really meaningful and authentic cultural learning experiences. So maybe it's a marae day, but I would encourage you to think about long-term relationships with your runanga or runaka or your iwi or mana whenua, and taking time to build those relationships, listening to your community and seeing what their needs are. Um, it might be learning um, mātauranga Māori um, or rongoa or um, just bringing in aspects that authentically link to that lear the learning that you're basing your camp on and, and the kind of learning intentions that you have for th that experience or those experiences. Um, <clears throat> but thinking about you know, how can this help support my students in this learning journey? How can this um, create a more rich experience for all of my students? Um, and maybe that's about addressing multiple uh, perspectives and um, thinking about ways that you move through place as well. And it's also about responding and recognizing different students' needs. So um, I know that one school, they originally had a five day camp that was went somewhere else. And after listening to their school community, um, Bano weren't comfortable and students weren't comfortable being away from home for that long. So this school um, really thought about, you know, what have we been delivering? Why are we delivering? Is it still relevant for our um, uh, akonga, for our whānau, for our community? And they decided to shift to five single day trips that run back to back. Their whole school is involved. 
and each uh, cohort, each year group is involved in different activities, but it's all about building community and it, it's very much grounded in te ao Māori. Um, a lot of their school population is, is Māori and so it's reflecting that diversity, reflecting those core values and now the camp is far more well attended than what it was previously. Um, <coughs> excuse me, the community comes in um, and there's a Fano evening where students share their learning, they cook kai for the community. Um, and so it's a really uh, impactful learning experience for everyone involved. Right, place responsive pedagogy. Um, this sometimes is called place based learning, um, and there are certainly similarities. Um, place based is where you are in one place um, and you are still learning about place, but you're not necessarily responding it to it. So this is kind of taking things to a deeper level. And it ties in really beautifully with localized curriculum and localized local learning. So um, the image that you see here, I think, is a really good reminder to us about how often we should be taking our learning outside of the four walls of the classroom and engaging in the spaces around us. And we don't need to go, you know, really far afield. We don't necessarily need to get in a bus or um, a car to have really rich learning experiences. We can have take students to places that are in their backyard that they may never have seen before or engage with in a particular way. And I think sometimes as educators, and I've certainly worked through this myself, is I have a fear that if my students <clears throat> aren't experiencing a place for the first time or they're not doing something new, then they're going to find it really boring. Um, and I've actually found through experimenting that that's not always the case. It depends on how you frame it um, and what uh, role our students play in that experience. So thinking about the places that are around you and the place that you might be based in for your school camp experience and responding to that. So become apprentice of it. What can you learn about this place? What do you notice about it um, in, at this time of year and in a different time of year? Um, what relationships exist in that place? Um, you might be looking at flora and fauna. You might be looking at human history and interaction of that place. You might be looking at how does that place make you feel or um, what opportunities does it allow you for learning, whether that's, you know, contextual learning or whether that's anything else. And that the activities that you design are therefore responding to the intricacies of that place. So rather than having an activity that you could apply anywhere, how are you adapting that activity so that it, it really um, draws on the, the specialness of that place that you're in? And that provides opportunities for students to contribute and, and local experts to contribute and for you to build connections within the community. So um, I think, again, if we start to think about building um, and taking time to build relationships, authentic relationships with mana whenua and our local iwi, then this is, they have so much knowledge of place that um, Pākehā do not have or may not have. And so I think that's a really beautiful way to start building those connections as well. Sharing stories is another powerful thing. So maybe your students have experienced this place or they could be describing their interaction with that place for the first time. It could be um, history based. It could be um, stories of people journeying through a place, historical stories, all those kind of things. They really help to bring a place alive. And I think stories are so powerful. Um, I, love, I love stories. And then thinking about a place from multiple perspectives. Um, so, you know, taking that, that broader view. So what does that look like in a camp context? Well, like I've said, activities respond to the place. So for example, if you're going to a place with some forest, you might identify what plants are there that may not be anywhere else and why are they there? Um, and, and perhaps someone planted them or perhaps um, you might want to learn about how you might be able to interact with those plants, maybe for runaka, um, not runaka, um, rongoa, sorry, or for weaving. Um, and so that kind of can help you to unravel things a little bit more. Um, students are encouraged to consider the place in depth. And so there are some really good questions that you can ask um, around the apprentice of place and also the four signposts of place responsive pedagogy. There's a book by um, Mike Brown and Brian Watchow about that. Um, and in the PLD, we provide plenty of resources that unpack these further. And going into places regularly. So again, you know, we, we might want to have local places that we start to become really familiar with and engage in different seasons and different weather, with different experts, with different lenses. And it's actually about helping our students to 
learn how to do that and to feel comfortable with becoming familiar. I think COVID's been a really, you know, had a positive influence in that way and that people have started to explore their neighborhoods more. And instead of, you know, that kind of becoming dull, um, there's so many opportunities for feeling more connected and having a greater sense of belonging when you explore places again and again and again. So we want to make sure that our students can access the places that we, you know, take them to so that they can have that lifelong engagement themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the fourth concept is integrated learning. And um, I think a lot of us are, again, quite good at thinking about this. It's just about how we apply it. And, and that will look different in primary, intermediate, and secondary contexts. So it relates to inquiry-based learning and localized curriculum. And I really like this model here um, by the Center for Curriculum Redesign, where it's not just about integrating subject knowledge, but it's integrating, you know, like our beautiful New Zealand curriculum. It's about integrating the front end of the curriculum with the back end of the curriculum and thinking about what skills, knowledge, and character can we build in this one experience or multiple experiences. So it's taking that real holistic approach. And um, again, You'd be amazed about the connections that students make that we that we never would have expected. So I think even asking, you know, broader questions and reflection, or or thinking about, you know, getting feedback from students about what what have you found valuable, or what would you like to learn, even having signposting that and saying, cool, well, what kind of skills would you like to learn? What kind of things are important for you to develop in your own character? What kind of knowledges would you like to learn? So um, that's that's a use, really useful framing particularly when we think about our camps wanting to be grounded in curriculum. And so when we think about camp, that's thinking about um, using student experiences to design the purpose of camp. So coming back to that why and making sure that we've done lots of um, consultation, but actually not, not just consultation, but co-designing. Um, and that uh, we're considering what do our students need to be fully present and to flourish on camp. And so thinking about the whole learner, not just you know, those skills and, and their knowledge, but what about their character? Um, what about uh, you know, their own individual aspirations for themselves? And that might sound, oh my gosh, that sounds really overwhelming when I've got 30 kids or I'm taking a whole cohort away. But again, camp shouldn't be left up to one teacher and individual teachers can connect with students about the things that are meaningful to them. Camp can also be a really great way to build um, solutions to real world problems. So, if we think about climate change, you know, obviously that's a really big thing that's on a lot of our students' minds. And so how um, are our everyday learning experiences responding to that? But how are our school camp experiences also responding to that? So if we're traveling miles away um, to take our students to another place that is using a lot of um, fossil fuels or um, it's not a place that they can easily access again, then we might start to think, you know, well, what messages are we telling our students about what's valuable and what's important? Perhaps there's a local place that offers so much rich learning that we haven't considered because, again, we're worried about how our students might respond to a familiar place. And then finding the natural synergies and connections between learning areas. So we don't want to force it. We want it to be authentic. And I think, um, like I've said in a pre the previous webinars, sometimes having a narrative or a story or thinking about the camp as a journey can be a really helpful way of hanging um, key aspects on there and, and linking everything in. So um, I know some schools have a uh, historical story about their school and they've used that as a guide for their school camp experiences throughout a, a student's life at their school. So, you know, year one, they start off um, thinking about the origins of that place. And so their camp kind of looks at that. And then, um, throughout the years, they've actually taken students to different key sites. Uh, this is a school based down on Ototahi or Christchurch. And they ended up journeying, um, walking and kayaking and biking through significant places of Ngaitahu, um, which had uh, important historical places around their school. So I think those kind of things and, and making it an adventure and a journey can be really helpful in, in bringing those natural links and in inquiry. So in the Revisioning School Camps PLD, we spend um, the good part of a morning unpacking these in a, um, a bit more depth because there's a lot more to it than just what I've talked to now. Um, and, and people find that really helpful, I think, um, 
we tend to just get stuck on the activity sometimes when we're planning our camps. And so, yeah, making sure that we're, we're connecting with some concepts like these or like your school values is really helpful. Um, so I'd encourage you to think about what each of these concepts mean to you and how could you start to think about incorporating those into your existing camps or um, perhaps some future revision camp that you're thinking of. And, and not go, okay, I'm going to tack all four, although if you're really ambitious, you might do that. Um, but even just picking one and going, how could I um, bring this in, even into your classroom on a daily basis, um, to start building up your own confidence and understanding of what that might look like. And identifying which ones you might, you might need a bit more support with and then reaching out or identifying people that can help you with that. So that's the presentation part of the webinar today. Um, just before I get into the question and answer time, just to give you a heads up on our next uh, webinar. So that's happening on, it's actually, oh yeah, Thursday the 16th of September, we have changed that date. Um, and that is gonna be where we have two of our case study schools sharing their experiences. Um, and one of them is going to be talking to how to build authentic partnership with mana whenua. So I know that's something that many of you are really interested in. And our other case study school is going to be talking about, um, from a senior leadership team perspective, how do we actually support and what structures do we put in place to support our staff to, to go on that journey and um, how to build that really important why into our school charter. So working with the board of trustees on that. So if they sound like things that would be really interesting to you, make sure that you come along. Um, also, we have the three uh, workshops that we're delivering in uh, November this year in South Auckland, Livin and Temeru. And so if you're interested in finding more about the Revisioning School Camps PLD, go onto our website and you can also register there. Check out the resources that we have. And if you have any questions after this webinar, then you can email me as well. Great. We well, thank you so much for coming along this journey with me today. Um, hopefully that's been helpful. And if you do have any questions, please stick around. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Go well. Ka kite.